What's up, guys, and welcome to another Foundation to Fulfillment episode. Today, I've got Jordan Potts with me. We're going to be talking everything about the body, training, flexibility, movement, everything, how we can sort of hack the body in a holistic way almost. So we want to have an approach towards health and fitness, but also just the overall health in that little bit of a different view, I suppose. So welcome, brother. Let's go, baby. Ready for Let's this? Let's go. <laughs> yeah, mate. Yeah. I'm always ready. I was born ready. That's it. So, mate, today I sort of want to break down a few things because obviously, you know, not many people would know, but you were the one that got me into this. Mm. You know, essentially I was that guy that would go to the gym, do a bodybuilding workout, you know, your sets, your reps, and that's me done. But now I've been brought into this world of ice baths, breath work, proper movement, you know, childlike play when you're training actually having a bit of a different outlook on it and seeing that it can benefit my body as well, not just going to the gym and doing that, you know, structured sort of workout. So I guess for you, bro, what do you see is the the best way to go about this for people personally? Mm, yeah, it's an interesting, interesting question. I don't think there's any best way to go about anything. Mm. I think it's all all specific to the result that you want to achieve. Of course, so, yeah. You know, let's look at bodybuilding. If, if you want to be a bodybuilder, Fair enough, do, mm. do the bodybuilding work. Unfortunately, because it's such a big scene in the 24-7 gyms and it's, you know, go to chest and back, go to buy and tries, go to, you know, all that. I used to do it too, you know, <laughs> go course, and do yeah. day. Get the hypertrophy going. Yeah, it's, it's usually where young people start and so they get deeply ingrained into that, you know, modality and, and paradigm of just go to the gym hit your four by ten or you know three by eight or whatever it is and you know move on different body parts and just kind of like work their way around a gym and so you eventually get to a point in your training where if you don't want to be a bodybuilder and look if you want to be a bodybuilder f- fair enough like go for it yeah like, there's do, no do right or wrong stuff and yeah it, if that that's just going to create a certain uh a certain result but it's really important to understand what your intention for training is and so a lot of people i find just follow trends or they follow what they see on Instagram or they follow what their mates are doing. They don't actually understand what they want. Mm. And so as soon as you gain clarity around, all right, what do I actually want out of my body from a, you know, a, a physical point? So what do I want to be able to do? Do I want to be able to surf, play jujitsu, uh, do jujitsu? Do I, am I a runner? Am I doing this for footy? And, you know, like there's so many, am I just doing this because I want to feel good? Mm. Am I doing it because I'm in pain? There's so many avenues in physical health where we can go attack different avenues. Mm. Mental health, okay, am I doing this just for an endorphin release or do I have, you know, am I bound up and it's causing me a lot of emotional pain because I'm always stiff or my back's really sore or my shoulders are loose and cactus or whatever it is. And then if you go into like emotional health, it's like, okay, do I, am, I, am I unsatisfied with my body? Am I insecure? Am I doing this, you know, to feel more confident? Whatever it is like that. So once you can get really clear on your why or the, or the outcome, the goal, then we go, all right, what's the best way to achieve this? And so I think from a holistic approach and the way I look at it now is it's, it's really movement quality is probably the, the biggest foundation. Mm. So how well do you actually move? Like there's no point in doing four by 10 or, you know, bodybuilding sets if you're so bound and jacked that you're super tight, you can't touch your toes. No range of motion sort of yeah, stuff. Yeah, like you, you, your quality of, quality of life has decreased because of your training. Yeah. However, if you're, you know, a skinny rake and you definitely want to pack on some pounds, it's probably worth doing some hy- hypertrophy. Like, you know, you, yeah. you get some muscle on you and, and build yeah. some confidence. So it's really just about addressing that clarity. But from my point of view, I think quality of movement first, then also flexibility because when we look at longevity you can get strong quite easily and most people will go to the gym and and increase strength but what they don't focus on is how how they recover Mm. so stretching range of motion making sure they're increasing their ability to to move through a pain-free range and then that basically if they don't focus on that they end up in a position where they're training and they're getting fit but then on the other side, on the 23 hours outside of the gym, I hope, I hope they're only doing hours. <laughs> Some of them do three, four-hour sessions. But, you know, your time outside the gym spent resenting or not even resenting because I used to love doms. I used to get a kick out of being really sore. Yeah, but yeah. it's like kind of like there's, there's a really weird trade-off. Like you go and smash yourself in the gym and then you spend 23 hours walking around 
Well, like, you know, you, you're so busted up. Taking the stairs is a, is a it's mission. It's like a badge of honour for some people, right, yeah, though? You yeah. see them like, oh, look, left a leg day, I can barely sit down yeah. on the toilet, you know, things like culture. that. It's a culture. It's a big course. culture. Yeah. So, and, it, and it's just about understanding that trade-off. And so for a lot of people, even just introducing some stretching, which unfortunately there's not a culture around stretching. It's not a cool thing, is it? Well, it's stretchy isn't sexy. Oh. So, but when someone sees someone who's flexible can touch their toes hands flat on the floor or they can do the splits or they can do a back bridge like holy shit that's actually pretty cool yeah like i wish i could do that well do do you actually wish you could do this because all you do is everything but this (laughs) so if you wanted to do it you could do it quite easily if you practice it so yeah i think adding some stretching in is super crucial for longevity before and and after as well hey like even just a do you believe yeah. in that, you know, they've always said do that warm-up before the actual session, but you could incorporate some sort of flexible lifting to start your session off, right? Yeah, so when we look at, so for instance, we use range of strength, which mm. is your ability to be strong through a full range of motion. Yep. And the whole concept of warming up is really interesting because it's, you know, there's the analogy of like a lion doesn't warm up. Mm. the reason humans have added this thing is is because we're so sedentary we've got these lifestyles like you know we're sitting in this position right now we it wouldn't be smart for us to go from sitting down for eight hours to going to a full sprint if we're not ready for it so Mm. you could get quite hurt or you could uh risk risk injury so it's important to understand what the outcome and where you're at in your journey so for some people it is necessary to warm up some people they're in a very they're very mobile they're very resilient their body's they've trained into these ranges and they can do stuff cold. You know, I can do a Jefferson cold because I know my back's not going to break. Whereas some with a, a back injury, there's no way I'd even put them in that range. Mm. So it's really about assessing where you're at with your current range, where you're at with your current pain and how well you can, how resilient you are to injury. And so that's why I think it's important to train the range, the, the range of strength. So this loaded mobility work where, so, for instance, if we think about the bicep, when you, when you do a bicep curl, so you're squeezing your bicep at the top and it's contracted like it's pumped up and that's a shortened position, all right? It's a very safe position as well. Like the, the bicep's got a lot of blood in it, a lot of strength at the top position. If we then stretch your arm out to a straight position, the bicep is lengthened into this vulnerable position. The, the muscle's open, it's stretched, it's full length and the joints are more exposed as well. And so that's our end range and that's where we're vulnerable to injury. Mm. So it's much more easier to get injured at your end range than it is at your inner range. Yeah. So this is where people, you know, a lot of the time we're training inner range and very rarely do we train outer. Yeah. And so taking your muscles through a full range of motion and making them strong and resilient. Get that full extension. Pre- prevents. And, you know, there's so much research to say, oh, you know, this is bad. This is, you know, it's, 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 um, there's a high risk of injury. Well, yes, there is a high risk of injury. If you do it dumb, you wouldn't go and load a 1RM on a tissue that's vulnerable. Mm. But if you work your way into blood flow and higher rep schemes and build some tolerance and some resilience in the tissue, you then start to make that end range, which is your vulnerable place, strong. And then all of a sudden the body goes, hey, we're super strong out here. Let's explore this more. So you look at like gymnasts. They got crazy strength at end range. They do all these, or even calisthenics. All these guys who do calisthenics, and they're just, the feats that they do with their body is just incredible, mm. incredible. And so it's about doing it in a smart way. And so if, you, you know, if you're keen to look at more flexibility or range, you know, look it up, look up end range strength, look up range conditioning, you know, functional range conditioning, FRC. There's so much quality information out there to improve your flexibility so your quality of life goes up. Now, that's not to say you can't bodybuild at the same time. Of course, yeah. That's not to say you can't do CrossFit, you can't do yoga, you can't do Pilates, you can't do strength training, you can't do whatever it is you want to do, running. But also adding in that longevity piece is going to make your life so much better. So I think that's a really important way to look at training is, is with my time in the gym, am I building myself up, but am I also extending or improving my quality of life? Mm. Yeah, and I think you start to also focus on what your body can do for you more so than how it looks. Mm. I think that's a big aspect because obviously it's one of the biggest industries without, in the world. Without, without stealing the, you know, taking the thunder away from everyone wants to look good naked. Of course, yeah, yeah. So, you know, yeah. There, there is the point of like, you do want to look good and you want to feel confident. Yeah. So it's about finding that balance, you know, and, and, and then leaning like whatever you're going to say. So it's without, I know I used to be very like, no, nah, I'm not image at all. 
And then I'm like, people do want Everyone's that. got it, People yeah. do want that. Like, you don't yep. want to be... You don't want to be uncomfortable in your skin. Yeah, it, it is. It is nice to be comfortable in your skin. So it's about that balance. Of course, because like it's there's a reason why it's one of the biggest industries in the world, right? Mm. You know, the fitness industry, people trying to lose weight, people trying to lose fat, all this sort of thing. So, and it's usually coming down to that aspect you just said. Everyone wants to feel good and look good, sec- uh, naked. Mm. So it's like you yeah. look in the mirror, you want to be like, yeah, I, yeah, I'm proud of myself. So totally get that. And I think this leads into you working in and working out. You obviously talked about your flexibility and all this sort of thing. How often do you think you should be doing that per week kind of thing? If you have a whole day where it's just like range of motion, childlike playing, like just having fun with your training. I think it's really important again to reassess where you're at and and what your current goals are with your training. Because for instance, if you go into an intensified strength block, if you've got strength goals to hit, you know, massive numbers, there's probably more focus going to be on hitting those numbers and maybe having some days where you recover. Whereas if you just purely like playing and enjoying and you like doing a bit of strength, add in a little bit of strength into your, your play each day. So it's, it's, it's kind of like reassess where you're at, what you want and what's going to be the best avenue to get there. So for us, we, I mean, the way I look at it is in the group fitness scene, most people want to turn up and do the hard work. Mm. They just want to turn up, get told what to do with their fitness, and then they're out. So that's cool. We, we pay attention to that because that's a big part of the market. And so we have, out of our Monday to Friday schedule, we've got four days. So Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday are focused on working out. And then we focus on the Wednesday, which is a working in. So one day for us is dedicated to slowing down the nervous system, allowing people the space to breathe and recover, and actually programming in stretching, programming in breath work, programming in meditation and ice bath, so that they still they still just turn up and do the session. They're still be being coached, but what they're doing is they're instead of their you know emptying their cup, they're filling their cup up. Mm. We do it midweek, so it keeps the nervous system fresh and it kind of breaks the week up. So we find that works really well. It's actually like one of our favorite sessions for our members. They go, you know, I feel incredible after the Wednesday session. Yeah, down at Exalto. Shout out Exalto, guys. Like one of the best gyms going. So uh, now, great segue into what you guys actually do there, which I find now is being implemented into a lot of people's lives. You know, the recovery aspect, the the filling the cup, which is the ice baths and breath work stuff. So let's talk a little bit about that. Yes. We were just speaking about this before we started. Oh, we, hit, we hit record. So I feel with where we're at as a society – and where we're at in the world in terms of all of our thoughts and our actions and beliefs and what's going on in the world. Fitness a couple of years ago went massively viral. Everyone wanted to be fit as they could. CrossFit was booming, F45s booming, HIIT training, boot camps, all of it's booming. And I think we're getting to a point after, you know, COVID-19 hit and we've had these couple of years of challenge, people are starting to question what, truly matters to them so what's what's like really important at the end of the day you know your family your own health well first of all your own health your family's health and then looking at your community and how you can function within society and doing all this so for me i've i come across a lot of people who the focus has shifted maybe not so entirely on fitness but more so towards just how they are as human beings Dealing with our lizard brain a little bit. All yeah. those automatic systems that are in place, like the, the paras, parasympathetic and the sympathetic state. Yeah. You know, when we talk about this, whoever has never heard of that, I guess simply put, your sympathetic states when that anxiety kicks in, right? Something happens and it freaks it's you out and you're response. like stress response. So road rage, someone at work bullying you, whatever it might mm-hmm. be, all these things start happening and we're actually not that great at coping with it anymore, are we? Yeah, so it's, it's interesting because you think about... You know, Darren just said this the other day on the potty. I was lo- lo- so absolutely good, love eh? that one. If you listen to this, you haven't listened to Darren yet on the uh, the technician, go and tune into that. So, for instance, like back in a, a tribal day or whatever, we might have come across a lion or we might have come across, you know, another tribe or whatever, and there would have been a stress response maybe one or two a day. And you take your family, you, you deal with the stress response, and then you flee, and then you calm down. Mm. And you and you rest and recover, and you get back into that that calm state, that parasympathetic state. Now in this modern world, the con- concrete jungle, social media, you know, tasks, all these jobs, to-do lists, rah, 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 people, thousands, you know, not even thousands, billions of people on the planet. So there's lots of opportunity for interaction and stuff. 
we're constantly under these stresses of we have to be somewhere, we have to do something, we have to get this done, we have to be this for this person, we've got to do this, the emails, the texts, the responsibilities, all this stuff coming up. Then there's other people's actions and how we feel about them acting out. So we're constantly in these triggers where there's just like the, the alarm bells going ding, 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 and then you get to the end of the day and you're like, oh man, oh, I'm wrecked. I'm cooked. Yeah, so there's, we don't, it's, it's odd, unless people go on a holiday, to actually just chill. Mm. It's really, really rare these days to find someone who goes, man, I just chill. Just be. Yeah, I just enjoy life. Yeah. Like that, that's unfortunately a minority now. A majority of people aren't in that relaxed state of mind often enough. They might take a holiday once a year or once every five years and, and the first week they're on the holiday, they get sick. Oh, man, I just got absolutely wrecked. Or, or you know, if I, when I was at university, I experienced this a lot. You'd stress yourself out all semester. You'd cram hard. You'd smash your exams. You'd first day of holiday, you'd, yep, holiday and you'd be sick, cook, cooked as. Mm. I'd be in bed, you know, a couple of days with a cold or run down and I'd have to, like, you know, go into a sauna or lay on the beach and just be so, just melting because... My body's in this stress response for 13 weeks and I never, 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 never took the time to keep my energy high. I was just focused on... Just excelling. do, do, do. And then give myself a break and the whole body goes, whoa, we need to recover, mate. You've had 13 you know, weeks of neglect. And then if you put that into the business world, there are people out there years on end of neglect of their health and they take a holiday with their family or whatever themselves and they get sick. So... It's really important to understand in the modern world, we've got all of these opportunities for these stress responses and these alarm bells going off. And if we're not taking the time to, instead of working out, putting energy out of our bodies, you know, creating the energy flow of you know, training or this and work or whatever, but actually filling the cup up and taking that minute to go, or you know, 10 minutes a day even, to just chill, do some deep breathing you don't have to be crazy at breath work you don't even have to meditate just go out in nature sit in the corner by yourself whatever it is just just calm yourself down put your phone away put your phone down get that away and just takes even so they've studies have proven six deep breaths will get you in a parasympathetic state so well the military does it right like special special forces if they're in a stressful situation yeah they do that box breath yeah what's it six in six out or something like that oh so box breathing is just even on every side. So yeah, you can okay. do four, 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 four. You could do three, three, three. It'll depend on your capacity in your lungs. Yep. But I mean, Aubrey Marcus speaks about it every day on his, on every podcast. And then in his own, your day book, which is incredible. Even just six deep breaths, you breathe in and then you just lengthen your exhale as much as you can. You just do six of those and you'll, you'll turn on the parasympathetic state. Yeah. And so it's just, it's incredible once people learn this as a skill, because it's not taught in schools. Well, I think it's starting to. Oh, really? That's cool. Yeah, like some, I know teachers that are teaching meditation and teaching breath work in schools now, which is epic. It's never really, I mean, I did sport and exercise science. It was never really, like we'd do, we would do like stress response training and, you know, fitness tests and stuff, but we're never taught how to get into the parasympathetic state. Like they didn't go, right, so you're going to train an athlete and do, you know, all of this CO2 test, but you're not, they didn't teaching you how to calm yourself down or meditate or yeah. breathe. So it's really interesting. It's like all focused on the yang, the output, the, the do, 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 do. And we're not teaching, there's no, there's no large education platform in the modern society that's teaching people how to slow down. Man, imagine if you had someone like that going around to every office, just oh, like man. those white collars just going in and teaching them, hey guys, yeah. before we start our work day, let's do a couple of deep breaths. Yeah. Let's get it into that parasympathetic, parasympathetic state. You probably just had a stressful drive to work mm. and let's get this done. Yeah. And once you're in that frequency, once you're in that state of mind, that calm state, how much better your brain works, how much more switched on your nervous system is, how much more tolerance you have to stress how much more tolerance you have to everything that's going on in your world at that time because you're not in this triggered fight or flight response of like fuck i've got to survive mm. instead you're in this like yep cool i got it i'm being my best i can apply thought energy focus concentration you know critical thinking it's yeah it's a game changer <laughs> so that 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 i guess is the point of like working in so why would you work in in a fitness regime why would you focus 
in your training having some aspect of working in, it's only going to enhance your results so much more. Mm-hmm. It's, it's going to 10x your results in terms of your emotional health, how you feel every day, how your recovery is, how your nervous systems, your ability to actually perform when you come back to the intensity. And it's just, it's just something that is really a lost art in, in the modern world because people are just go, 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 go. So, you know, we're not human doings, we're not human havings, we're human beings. And so mm. we can, when we can learn to instead do or have and, in, and really learn to just be, that's when the human essence really starts to open up. We become more present. And it's crazy to think that we can breathe for free. You know, this is a, it's a free resource. Is it crazy? <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> is it well, actually crazy? <laughs> it, it's crazy. We don't get, like you said, we don't get yeah. taught these things. This yeah. isn't something that's when you, I've tried to ask people to come down and do like say stillness on a Sunday and like, Hey, come do some breath work. And like, what do you mean? I know how to breathe. Mm. You always get that response. It's like, yeah, okay, that's cool. But yeah. hey, it is getting bigger. Like you said, which is awesome. But yeah. And I think it's like breathing is different to breath work. Mm. And I'll just, I'll just tell people, you know, if you, if you're happy with how you're feeling, then don't come do it. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Like if, if everything's working out for you, cool, don't do it. There's no need to. Why change something that's not working? Mm-hmm. But statistics show, you know, we're at the, in the worst state of ever with mental health, physical health, catabolic health, metabolic health, like all of these, you know, lifestyle diseases, chronic illnesses, all this stuff's sky high. So there's a good chance, and I, I'm, I rarely meet people, rarely meet people who have like fully got it dialed in. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's a very good point, actually. Like, how many people do you meet and you go, yep, you've, you've got it nailed? Maybe Daz. Daz? <laughs> Yourself? <laughs> yeah, Cindy O'Meara. Yeah. Like, there, there are people out there. But like, it's minuscule. It, it, when we talk about the global, global population. Eight billion people. It's, it's, it's such a small percentage. And it's just because of the education system. So, for people who are resistant, we also got to pay attention and, and acknowledge that that resistance is resistance, resistance is real mm. i felt it when i first started doing breath work you know i bought my i was like no nah, what wim hof what so weird and then he was in melbourne when i was there and i'm like you know what i'm just gonna go and suss this out i'm just gonna see what all the yahoo and, and talk is about and i'm gonna go try it now we're sitting here mm, <laughs> four mate, years later dude. I'm addicted to breath work. You've got a gym that really incorporates it as a massive part of what you do, mm. you know, and, and great segue into the, the ice bath aspect mm. of it, you know. How did that change your life personally and how do you believe it can help people that are listening? Yeah, so just so deeply, so deeply gives you a sense of personal control and empowerment within situations that are a bit sticky or are a bit stressful. And so what I think, going back to the concrete jungle, we're having all of these triggers and these stress responses and they're not necessarily that life-threatening. Like they're not that big. Like it might be an email or it might be some dickhead you know, yelling at you or it might be cut you off traffic or you know, your partner and you are having a blue or whatever it is. Like you never know. They're not massive events. For you to just stay calm and not be triggered by those events is going to completely change your life. So I, always, I used to be someone who would just constantly be on the edge, ready to snap. If someone crossed me the wrong way, I would give them a serving. Like I've, I've, and I've healed a lot of wounds in people because I, I did some really mean things to people. Only verbally. I never ever physically abused someone, but I used to be a big, big yeller. I'd lose the plot and I'd just let loose on people and tell them where I, what I thought about them, which was not nice. I was just ang- all my own anger coming out. And... When I started doing ice baths, it taught me that when you have this feeling of stress, this overwhelming feeling of, it's like a survival state. You're like, holy shit, I'm going to die in this thing. This is so cold. Oh, yeah. And it freaks you out at the start. You, your emotions go wild. You get all this primal you know, stuff that comes up about, okay, I need to, because our, our brains and our bodies are built to survive. That's, that's the be all and end all. Survive and procreate. And so when we're in a... a a position where we our survival is at risk or jeopardized we want to just do everything to get out of it and to be safe so in an ice bath the first thing you want to do is get out of the cold water and so by learning to actually stay in there what happens is our our bodies are beautiful mach- machines of adaptation you sit in there and then your body goes oh your mind's calm 
Oh, the body's all good. We're all good. We can do this. And all of a sudden, you're sitting back like a warm bath, ready to have a pina colada on the beach, sitting in a nice <laughs> bath, you know? And, yeah. and it teaches you that even in, in the, under stress or in a super stressful and scary situation, you can keep calm. And going back to the, like the Navy SEALs, that's what they train for. They, they train for high-stress environments to be high performers under stress because you can talk all you want about high performance. You can talk all about being a boss, but when shit hits the fan, what kind of person are you? And mm. I, can, I can say from experience and from a known feeling within myself, I've had probably, oh, let's, say, let's say four events since 2019 that have been that I previously would have lost the plot. So we had COVID, so business gets shut down, close the gym doors, income, well, what's going on, all these members, like, that was a big one for me. Like, my, my livelihood, my passion was just crushed and, like, whoa. Mm. So being able to breathe through that, stay calm, think about how we're going to attack it instead of just losing the plot. The other one was watching my dog get hit by a car and Nick... We both watched his head go under the tire, which was so traumatic and uh, and full on to to see just to see anything anything it was it was it was wild so to see that happen and be there to support Nicola, who she was absolutely traumatized and she was just hysterical and I just had this knowing inside of myself that if I react here, it doesn't serve him any better mm. And it doesn't serve Nicola any better. And so all I focused on, I, the soon as it happened, there was ladies screaming. It was in a car park. They were screaming, oh my God, well, there's blood everywhere. And I just took one big breath in. And I held and it's like everything slows down. Mm. And I was like... And exhaled into the space. Went over to him, picked him up, held him, matched his breathing. I said, babe, we've got to go to the vet. Got him in the car. She started driving. Got her to calm her breathing down. I could feel him because he was still alive. He started to slow his breathing down, and he was. And then his little eye looked up to, at me and made eye contact with me. And he and it was like he sent me a message saying, "I'm, I'm, I'm here. I'm here with you. I can feel you." And so things like that, you know, I previously. Previously, I can guarantee I would have been like, oh, my God, shit, you know, like freaking out. Yeah. And then it was this massive, massive reaction, but it wouldn't have served anyone. Like, it's honestly, like just having that level of calm and we, you know, we st- unfortunately, he passed on the way to the vet, but me responding in a negative way wouldn't have changed the outcome. Mm. So it's like, why, why do that? If we can empower ourselves to be more calm under stress... Let's do it. You know, another one was in, in the gym. We had two young girls sprinting, sprinting past each other, coming back, uh, managed to smash into each other, split heads, blood everywhere, 20 kids in there screaming, oh, my God. Like these, and these girls were, like, pretty well knocked out on the ground with blood going everywhere. It was, it was like, <laughs> it was wild. Well. Yeah, it was like one of those things that you never want to happen as a coach. Yeah. And uh, so I was like, oh, all right. Take a breath. And actually, I oh, wolf whistled. I, I wolf whistled in the car. Calm everyone down. Kids, oi, everyone, take a big breath in. All the kids together, we took a breath in. Hold it. And I spoke to them while they're holding. We're going to stay calm. The girls will be okay. We breathe out. Okay, all the kids, go and get some juggling balls. Just juggle. I'm going to look after these girls. Put them on the bench. Got them to calm their breathing down. And they were, they were sweet, man. They were like, like their heads were sore and they were like had blood coming. But they, they looked at me and they said, okay, like we'll be right. They calmed their state. Yeah, so it's, it's just like, and, and you hear, I hear SAS, you know, and I'm not comparing my experiences to the SAS, obviously Special Force and what is, is a whole nother level in war and whatever. But they say they get this level of confidence in themselves under this pressure. Okay, I have the ability, it's my responsibility to respond here, take a breath in, Slow my nervous system down, focus, calm. And then what happens is you, you start to navigate life with personal control. You can't control the outside world, but you can control how you respond or you react. Mm. And so that's where something like the ice bath really is, the, is a metaphor for life. 
Every single time you go to get in there, there's this little monkey on your shoulder going, it's going to be cold, motherfucker. <laughs> oh, my God, get out. <laughs> you, know, and, you can't and, handle this. And you have to meet it every time. Of course. You, know, you have to you get in there and you go, all right, this is cold. It doesn't get any warmer. So decide to breathe, calm it, and calm down. And you eventually love it. And time and time again, that kind of training and choosing things that are stressful and learning how to become calm will serve you in your life. Big time, bro. I talked about it before, before we started, where I feel lately because I've put myself through so many stressful situations that allow myself to build up this tolerance towards them, things now that, like you just said, in the past I would have freaked out over, it's just so much easier to deal with it. Mm. You take it in, you allow it to happen, you control yourself, you know, you you take the deep breaths, you analyze it, cool, let's move on with life. Mm. It's not going to serve me to think about it for the next week. There's no point it's happened. So... To actually add on to your stories and to what you just talked about, it's incredible that I only just listened to this story last night, but I don't know if you've heard the story about the guy that uh, was in, he was locked in the freezer box. No. So essentially he's a worker, just like a warehouse worker, and he got, he locked himself accidentally in this freezer box. So he's in there, he starts to freak out. He's like, oh, I'm, I'm going to die. So he found this pen or something on the ground and started writing on the wall. And as he gets, as he's just writing his thoughts. He's like, I'm getting colder. I'm, this might be my last breath. I'm getting colder as it goes, it goes, it goes. And he eventually passes away. They come in, they open up the door, they go in there and they're like, man, it's not even that cold in here. Like he literally, it actually wasn't a temperature where it could kill you. He literally killed himself by telling himself he was getting colder, he was getting colder, this might be my last breath. And he basically thought himself into his own death. Because wow. his whole body just shut down. It was like, oh yeah, it is colder. It is colder. So, and they looked at it. He had plenty of oxygen. He was only in there for a couple of hours, but plenty of oxygen. It wasn't that cold. And they realized that, yeah, he had literally killed himself by telling himself that what we just said, you know? And it's like, mm. like you just said, getting into the, the ice cold bus, if you're able to tell yourself certain things, your body's actually a lot more resilient than you might think. Mm. You know, we are built pretty tough. And I guess that shows the power of, our language and our words because mm. it, that's a spectrum. You know, we so commonly hear stories about how people were close to death and they tell themselves they're going to survive and they focus on the positive and they focus on what they can do and their body's innate ability to overcome the challenge and now, oh, they are five. But then that's the other side of the spectrum. You know, there's, there's always that, that continuum. It's not like ended. It's, it's like, so that's really important to understand. It's like, you know, our sentences or the sentences we tell ourselves they can end up being prison sentences or, or mm. death sentences. Yeah. And in his case, he, he sentenced himself to death by the sentence he was telling himself. Speaking it into existence. Mm. That's crazy, right? And it, yeah. we hear a lot of it. We're going to mention Daz a fair bit in this, obviously, because he's. it's been life-changing just hearing him talk about certain words. The way I sp- Even the way I spoke has changed since meeting him. Mm. You know, saying things as, I'm trying to do this. At the moment. Yeah, at the moment. <laughs> it's like, man, what? Yeah. Even just going into everything with love and understanding, you know, the, the same quote that I've mentioned a few times where it's like, uh, anger knocked at the door, love answered, and no one was there. Mm. It's, you know, if you greet everyone with love, no one can harm you. Well, I guess they can, they can try, but imagine trying to fight someone that's just trying to hug you. Mm. How far is it going to get? Yeah, it's it's power. and And we've been taught to fight we've been taught you know that right and wrong there's only one right way you know you pass if you're good you fail if you're bad all of this stuff this this indoctrination this conditioning that happens in the modern world and you get to a point where you realize it's not it's probably not serving you best as a human being to be like that it has it does serve a purpose but there's a lot of things where love wins i mean a lot of things always love always wins it always does I have just had that this morning. Previously, you know, I had this, this lady in this car park, she got pissed off at me because I was driving in circles, getting Indy to sleep in the car while Nick was in Big W. And I, like, drove around and she missed the park because of it. So she's, like, blowing up. She's like, whoa, 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 whoa like, getting so cut at me. And I just said, oh, I just put my hands. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, my bad. Like, no I'm, stay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm just driving around, love, like, it's okay. Anyway, she's like putting on the brakes and stuff, like trying to piss me off. And previously, me being a, a larrikin, I would have like beeped her and like been like, oh yeah, you dickhead, like, yeah, and stirred her up and like made her day worse. Yeah. And th- it just keeps ringing in my head now. I love wind. So, you know, I could see that 
she's obviously she's probably having a shit day. Who knows what happened? Who knows what's happened this week or this last couple of years? She's in this triggered state. And so she did that. And I just started sending her love, like, like just with my thoughts. I just went, look, if you're feeling like shit, that's okay. I understand. You know, I know this isn't my fault. It's just the way you're responding. So here's some love. And I drove past her and she just was like, <laughs> and driving off. And it wasn't a positive outcome. Like she didn't give me a smile or anything, but just knowing that that's my responsibility. Mm. Me being a dickhead and, and stirring her up more doesn't serve anyone. Like it, it's just, it's just a horrible outcome. So it's just like that self-awareness being able to be aware of yourself and how you act in the world. And I think doing things that are challenging give you more self-awareness and more growth in, in your capacity to live, navigate life in a more loving and, and peaceful and confident and also, you know, resilient way. Mm, I love that. And it's just understanding how much those situations do eventually harm your body, you know, physically, mm. this meat sack that we're in. So if you can stay within that very calm state, it's going to obviously serve you much more positively than it is the, the other way. Yeah, if you simply think about how do you feel when you're angry? Yeah, is everything it a, tightens up. Is it a nice feeling to be angry? Is it a feeling that you would wish upon your children when you have children? Is it a feeling that you wish upon, you know, your best friends? Would you, uh, would you want them to be angry all the time? No. So let's get out of those vibrations. Let's get back into love, peace, calm, compassion, empathy, all of these things that really serve us to first of all connect with ourselves better and have less judgment on ourselves and more peace in our own peace of our own minds. And then when we connect with other people, it feels more authentic and it feels more relaxed. And I think you can so commonly see it in a lot of people. There's a so, you know, the world's currently vibrating in fear, guilt, shame, you know, with everything that's going on. If you can be that person who's calm and peaceful and and gentle and, and kind, but also strong and a leader by example, you don't have to be a dickhead about it and, and a, a martyr. Some people are born to do that. Go for it, go. But if it serves you to be calm, that energy is going to have an effect on people. Absolutely. Mm, definitely. And that's, that's actually a great segue into how can we actually get into this state with little hacks and stuff, body hacks, mm. sleep hacks, this sort of thing, because obviously there's a lot of things we can do that we can control to allow ourselves to be more resilient to the outside world, to the external forces. So I know that you speak a lot about... Um, when we're sleeping, there's a thing where you can actually ta tape your mouth shut to yes. do our nasal breathing, which guys, I started doing this, geez, two months ago, changed my life. You know, but what actually happens in that state? Yes, yeah, it's, it's so interesting that how um, it like when I first tried it, I heard it on Ben Greedfield podcast mm. and I tried, Nick and I tried it and we both woke up the next morning and went, what the, f like that was the best <laughs> sleep I've ever had. Yeah. And then we've done it. We've done it for years now, and every single person says the same thing. I've had I've had ten year old kids at the gym because I talk, we talk about this stuff at the gym. Ten year old kids ask their parents to buy a mouth tape, and they come back and go, "Oh, I slept so well." It's like little kids are doing it. Like it's, mm. it's yeah, and and not just that little kids are doing it, but even like all of our adult clients, like people who are stressed out with work or whatever. So what happens is, so if you think about breathing through your mouth, if you breathe through your mouth, it takes a lot of focus to breathe deep into your belly through your mouth like it actually it's a skill so diaphragmatic breathing bringing filling up your belly like a buddha with your mouth that's actually a skill a lot of people breathe into their chest mm. through their mouth and so when they breathe through their chest we we get our, our neck muscles get tight they, they raise and then our tight our chest tightens up and we create a stress response simply by breathing through our mouth and so this short sharp you know shallow breathing which most most adults have fallen into is a really harmful breathing pattern or breathing mechanism. And so when we change that and we start breathing through our nose, what happens is, is when we breathe through our nose, we have these little filters in our nose. And so, and I'm, I'm not going to go into the science stuff because I want to keep this really simple for people. So when we breathe in, our, all the air gets filtered. And so we get cleaner air. So that's why all the nose, the hairs and stuff are so sensitive. They serve a purpose. So they go through the nose, then it comes down this passage and down, it goes down into our diaphragms. And so when we get air into our diaphragm, into our bellies, there's a better oxygen transfer into our body. So we have better levels of uh, energy. Mm. And so what happens here is when we have these, this optimal physiology or this optimal science within our bodies, we go into these states of recovery 
of healing of you know more calm energy but in a more balanced body with all these you know i think if you think about like the levels of all the different chemicals in our bodies they get regulated and they get evened out you know if we if we hyperventilate <laughs> stress ourselves out that's not going to be a, a gentle sleep so if we calm ourselves down and breathe through our nose you'll find that you're actually in this really calm beautiful sleep where you get a lot of rest a deep rest recovery your regeneration your cell everything starts to repair and so by taping the mouth what you do is you just you're basically directing the energy just purely through the nose and out through the nose and so it can be i know people will hear this and be like whoa that's hectic like i'm gonna I'm gonna, that's gonna hurt me so the best thing to do excuse me best thing to do is actually to mouth tape yourself before bed and if you just do it for like 10 minutes, you can do it while you you can read in bed, you can do it while you're on your phone, or you can even do it even before when you're doing the dishes or just packing up. And you'll notice that, oh, with the tape over my mouth, there is a little bit of adaptation, there's a bit of change that I have to make, but I can just breathe through my nose. That's why we're given it. And when I breathe only through my nose, I feel more relaxed. My body starts to calm down. Ah, okay, this might serve me in my sleep. And sleep is proven to be one of the most beneficial things for our health. And so if we want to be healthier, sleep better, eat better, move better, think better, and we'll be better. And so sleep's like such, how many hours do we spend sleeping in our lifetime? You know, we spend you know, four to eight hours a day. That's, that's a fair chunk that you, you could put into healing yourself. So why not instead of sleeping in a stress response and waking up in the middle of the night and going for a piss or having sweats or bad bad dreams or nightmares? Because it even snoring, it can stop yeah, snoring, it, right? It even affects dreams. Yeah, right. Yeah, so so f- for people who have like nightmares a lot, if you're in a sympathetic state, think about it. If you're in a alliance chase and you're in a sympathetic state, if you try and sleep in that state, are you you're always switched on? You're gonna have these these thought patterns racing. You can't actually rest. And so this parasympathetic state can also help the mind be calm at night. Mm. It's so powerful. It's And it's such a simple hack. It's a very clean hack, you know. Yeah. It's like simple. What sort of tape would they get? Yeah, so there's this tape called, uh, you just go to the, the chemist and it's like the white papered sur- surgical tape. And if you just go ask, I think it's like you, it's like M20 or something on the on the inside of it but it's just like paper tape so it's not like gaffer Something not tape. too sticky <laughs> it's not like electrical tape it's gonna, <laughs> gonna rip your skin off but yeah, it's yeah. really easily it's quite easy to, to just peel off and if you little make a little tab on the end like you fold the back end of it over when you when you go to take it off it's really easy to take off so yeah it's, I love that it's a game changer but that would be yeah even my, one of my favourite hacks that I've incorporated lately mm. some other things that I know like obviously we've got a nutrition foundation episode but I, I love my me personally and I know you yourself things like incorporating like organ meats and that sort of thing how they can yeah. help our body you know because this is the body right mm. so I've found that my overall health even my skin and stuff has gotten healthier through that but also incorporating some um, actual just like sun mm. that's another Vitamin basic D. thing that so can we talk a bit about that and what why we're so we've been told for so long that we need to slather up in sunscreen and all oh, sort of thing bro we got another hour for this <laughs> podcast yeah look there's it depends where you look of course it always depends where you look because the best thing about science is it can really prove a lot of things so it's gonna always there's three sides to every coin Mm. you know there's there's the right the wrong and the middle you know there's like if you look at it there's there's so many different options now the healthy aspect would say you know i mean government health recommendations would say lather up with sunscreen when we actually look at when sunscreen was introduced and the level of cancer that, you know, cancer rates have actually gone up. But what was also introduced at that stage? You know, more vegetable oils, seed oils, soy, yeah. all this stuff, like all this chemically made and, and human manufactured and all these like preservatives and additives and stuff's been thrown into our food. Sprays and processed, on veggies. All of this stuff's added in. So we've had a massive, you know, like it's exponential, the growth in in sickness and illness has gone skyrocketed. And so there's this theory as well that cancer or the health of our cells is not actually due to the sun. It's due to the chemicals that are inside the cell. You know, so it'd be like, it'd be like a fishbowl. If you're looking at a fishbowl and you put a fishbowl out in the sun, the sun doesn't affect the water. But if you put 
toxic stuff in the water it's going to make it murky reacts whatever so it's the same with our bodies and we're made up with like so much water and 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 our cells really the the level of health within our cells is really what dictates our internal health and so the sun actually has healing properties vitamin d it's got all these amazing cleansing benefits energy benefits it's like really important for you know our eye health and then our eye health like links into you know energy and our our spirit and everything so it's like really understanding because we we could go really deep into this but you know i'm aware of where we're at in the podcast so that went quick eh? yeah yeah do (laughs) do some research around the sun but i think it's really important to understand it's it's smart not to get burnt of course we can all agree on like getting burnt is is trauma so you don't want to be out in the sun bare skin for 10 hours a day and get red roasted peeling and blistered but you know to get some naked sun on your skin and what i mean by that is like without sunscreen just get some sun on your skin at least 10 minutes a day if you want to be super protective do it in the morning so it's not like super super hectic yeah if you want to go deep into the rabbit hole you can look up butthole sunning and stuff you know (laughs) where you actually like legit yeah they you know so our our rectum our our anus has like the most sensitive skin in our body Mm. and so if you literally get sun onto your rectum for like they say it's 30 seconds you get you get your daily dose of vitamin d in 30 seconds no way. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Okay. Yes, yeah, so you want to look up. It's time to get the anus up to the sky. It's quite funny. Uh, so I experimented with it when we were at Rotala. I was um, experimenting. I came across it through Certified Health Nut. And I was like, what is this butthole stuff? Is, is this a joke? Like, what kind of trend is this? And I looked it up and I did it for I did, I did it for two weeks straight. And I just did 30 seconds backyard, legs over the back of my head, exposed bum hole, had the sun <laughs> coming straight down. Man, I felt like I was on a V. Yeah. Like I thought I just had a coffee. This hit of energy. It's crazy. And mm. so that was, that was a really interesting point for me. I was like, is, is vitamin D actually that important for our energy? And when mm. you do something like that and you feel... It's literally like you created a furnace in your body. Like you're burning from the bot- bottom up. <laughs> yeah, literally. <laughs> literally. And so, yeah, it's pretty cool to experiment. But going off that, that that's, that's a bit of an off-topic tangent. Uh, but that got actually, if we want to throw in a couple of resources for people mm. to look at as well, the certified health nut you just mentioned, I get a lot of cool stuff from him too. Yeah. And Carnivore Aurelius, is yeah, it? Yeah, Carnivore Aurelius. Man. Yeah. Ben Greenfield. Yeah, there's, there's so much information Aubrey out there. Aubrey Marcus. Aubrey Marcus. There's, there is literally so much information out there. So it's really important. And if they if anyone wants to learn about the food stuff that we said, Food Lies on mm. Instagram, Food Lies, he has gone so deep into the influence of big companies, of big dollars in the, the food market and the food production and processed foods. And, and he is deep in the rabbit hole and has incredible information around what truly matters. So whole, I think we can agree. You said organ meats. I, I, I will happily say that I love eating a nutrient dense diet and that includes meat because I know how important it is for my body. But Good some quality people, meat yeah, too, Some right? people don't and then that's fair. If you want to be vegan, vegetarian, whatever it is, if course, you want to be yeah. a breatharian, cool. But it's important to focus on nutrients. So nutrients are king, absolutely. So if you're focusing on getting the right nutrients in, if you're vegan or vegetarian, making sure... Your B12's higher, making sure your vitamin D, K, E, they're all high levels, making sure your, your coenzyme Q10 is up. Otherwise, they're, they're going to start getting you know, their degrad- you know, degeneration of the skin. They get skin problems, gut, bloating, uh, all of these, all this crazy amount of problems that happens. And it's simply just from getting a lack of nutrients. And so adding in some nutrients. And then if you're not keen on eating meat, but you want to start introducing, you look at supplements. You know, there's so many ancestral supplements out there, getting your liver capsules, getting heart capsules, getting brain capsules. You can get all of these different things that can really boost. And, you know, shout out to Sheridan Austin with Forage. It's the best product on the market, I believe, for any human being. It's like you can barely get your hands on it at the moment, right? It's going off. It's, It's like crack. It's yeah, it like is that it's, good. It's, it's the crack of the health world on the Sunshine Coast. Wow, it's crazy. that's incredible. Like there was like a lineup outside Whole Health for it. And they like... <laughs> do they do like drop days? Do they like a yeah, new they, iPhone? They did, it's like... Well, they did a delivery and there was like a full lineup to get it. And, and they were like, well, we're out of stock. Like it was like full set up. It's, wow. it's, it's, I think it's just so amazing because she made it for mothers and babies to make sure their the health was optimal for, for women to bring the child through utero through the pregnancy and then into the world in, in proper health and then all of a sudden we're like well if it's good for babies and mothers why can't all humans take it and so like all the blokes jumped on the bandwagon and mate it is 
it is the best thing on the market. It's it's such a well rounded product. It's just incredible. How have you changed personally since you've started taking it? Oh man, just just overall gut health. Yep. I mean, I th- it's hard to say because of course, like I've supplements a is lot, a tough one. No, well, what I so the reason I can vouch for it is I've seen the effect in people who aren't healthy. Yeah, because, that's the big change. Yeah, it's hard from a. a being already and having done four years of work on my gut health and my skin and everything to actually say that this was the product that changed me. The reason I take it is I've seen the effects in Nicola when she was pregnant. I've seen the effects on my own skin and stuff. But Clients not, and stuff too. But not to the level that I've seen it have an effect in people that are unhealthy who are Sheridan's clients who have taken it on and like their energy, they got their periods back or like men have got their, you know, libido back and their testosterone levels, like everything, their skin's healthier. Their, their hair's healthier. Their right hair, now, yeah, yeah, their hair growth, the nail growth, everything. Their whole body, their whole system is thriving because of this product. Oof. And so that's where I think it's really important for people. If they're struggling with their nutrition, simply as a starter, get, and, and Sheridan knows this, she's got some clients who aren't quite there yet with the food. They've still got, you know, their bad habits. But they know that if they take this product, at least they're filling their cup up with good nutrients. Yeah. And they still get good results. And so if you're on the journey where you're not quite ready to step into that full clean eating, just get a product like Foraged and make sure you can actually have some quality nutrients in your diet and then work your way to a healthier diet or don't. Or don't. Of course, yeah. yeah. Again, Gorge out take on what food. you want. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's, it's really just about assessing your values and, and what you want to achieve. So I think we can agree on that point as like, whether you, whatever way you want to choose to eat, avoid processed foods, avoid dodgy vegetable oils, avoid soy, avoid anything that's processed in a lab and just get back to whole foods. If it's whole and it's come from nature, it's probably good for you. And look, this, there's another aspect here which has come up a few times recently when I was trying to obviously, I'm well not trying, I was just suggesting to people, hey, my sponsor obviously, Bucox, the best butcher I've ever been to. Mm. The meat's incredible. Now, people will come back with the argument saying, oh yeah, but it's just so much more expensive than say Coles or Woolies and that sort of thing. The price isn't even that much different. And look at the quality difference. Mm. You know, there's something there to be spoken about. It's like, why are we so conditioned that to think that a butcher's, well, going to a butcher is going to send you over your budget for the week or whatever it might be. I understand some people might not understand that enough yet to be able to incorporate that into their life as well. well it's really, it comes back to that concept of would you rather spend money on quality food or would you rather fork out 5, 10, 50K on doctors and stuff? Doctors, surgeries, medication, when, you t- when your health turns to shit. Mm. And you know, chronic illness, lifestyle illness, you know, all of these things, these big catalyst events in our health or detriment to our health, they don't happen overnight. Like a lot of people say, oh, you know, I've got diabetes or, you know, so-and-so got cancer. Or they got... It didn't happen in a week. It happened over, you know, 10 years. And so if you've been eating like shit f- since you were 10, anywhere from 20 to 50, you, you're opening yourself up for some really harmful stuff to happen. Mm. It might not happen until you're 60. It might not happen and it might happen at 16. Look at Toddy. You know, like you never know when it will happen. But if, we, if you're not spending, if you're not investing in your health, you're just opening yourself up to those things to go, go a bit south. So that's where I say to people, the extra $5 a kilo for better mints or the extra $10 a kilo for a better steak is worth it because not only am I going to have better energy, not only am I going to be healthier, stronger, fitter, faster, m- mentally better, I'm actually showing, and it's also self-worth standards. And this is a big thing when you come to the like money that. mindset. Yeah. Are you worth $2 a kilo mints? Trav, are you worth $2 a kilo mints? <laughs> I'm worth way more than that. Mate, I wouldn't even feed that to my dog. Yeah. I'm worth the premium grade quality mints. I'm worth rib fillets. I'm worth... I value myself enough to, to, to buy quality things for myself. That hits different. Mm. What you just said then is actually really profound because... When you look at it this way, people spend more on their car. Oh, bro. You know, they'll buy the little suspension or whatever it might be and it's to make its car feel better. Mm. Why the fuck aren't we doing that for our body? Mm. Ooh, yeah, okay. I'm actually going to use that 
everywhere I go now, am I worth this? Yeah, what's your standards? What is your self-worth? It's like in a relationship, right? When someone goes, oh, I've got a shitty relationship. You know, I'm in a toxic relationship. No, you, that's your standard. Yeah. You've accepted that standard. Because if, I, if someone treats me like shit, I just don't accept the standard. I said, thank you for your, thank you for your energy. Thank you for you know, whatever you've done to me. But I appreciate it and I don't accept it. Like, that's your way of treating me. If I, as soon as I say, okay, that's okay for you to do to me, that's the standard that I accept. And that's in your training, in your relationships, in your business, in your, you know, when people step out and do their own business and they get like that. I went through the whole imposter thing about like charging people. Man, I'm worth my hourly rate. I'm worth the results that people get with me. I'm worth every single cent that people invest in me because I know it's multi multitude back in their life. So when I go into the grocery store, am I worth the cheap stuff? You know, and, and, you know, women get this with the money mindset around like going into stores and they, they look on the sale rack, babe, you're worth it. You, you're <laughs> worth it. Go and, go and buy yourself, go and treat yourself to a, a good dress. Mm. You know, don't always look at the sale rack. Yes, it's, it's good to be resourceful as well. But if we're like demeaning our, if we're reducing our value all the time, we're always going to be thinking we're not, we're not valuable. Damn, that, that actually will filter into pretty much every aspect of your life. Hmm. You know, that right there. So, because like you said, the relationship and everything. So, if we can have a better relationship with self and that self worth factor, the self love, and I think it actually starts to bring in more money for your life too, from what I've seen. Well, it's an attraction state. Yeah. So, as soon as you value yourself more and you're in that frequency, what do, how do other people respond to your frequency? If you're an angry, low level, you know, anxious person, people go, oh, mate. Like let's let's just paint the picture that you you're an angry person, you get triggered easily, you treat people like shit, and you're not nice to be around, Trav. And you walk into a shopping center, and people, or you even just walk into your your mate's house and they go, oh, Trav's, Trav's here. Here he is. Here he is. Let's be able to put up with Trav for a bit. Versus when you walk into that your mate's house and you know they're like, oh, Trav's here. Oh man, it just, I feel so good when Trav's around. It's the same thing with money. If you just treat money like shit and you always abuse it, oh fuck, I've never got money. I hate money. I don't. I don't even care about money. It's gonna. It's an energetic vibration. He goes, you know what? I don't care about you. I'm gonna run out of your bank account every single week. I'm gonna <laughs> like run away. I'm gonna run away from you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they always find out if you're talking shit. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And that. I'm glad you speak about it that way too, because Anna's version yeah. of that within the finance one was spot on like that as well. Mm. So I love that. Uh, another hack I, I've found recently that's really helped myself, obviously we talked about meditation a little bit and how much it's changed my life since meeting you. That's when I really stepped into the holistic space within the last, geez, 12, 16 months or whatever it's been. And it's changed my life, guys. So do, do you do regularly like meditate every day or like here and there sort of thing? Yeah, I'm I'm so <laughs> funny about this because yeah. I've learned to live in a meditative state mm. because power versus force, David Hawkins, when we force something, we're actually in a negative vibration. If I force you to do something, so if I say, Trav, you've got to go over there and you got to, you have to run up that hill. You have to run up that hill. Otherwise, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to force you to do it. You're like, fuck you. Like, I don't want to run up that hill. If I empower you, mate, running up that hill is going to make you super explosive. You're going to be an absolute beast. You're going to burn fat. You're going to be more energetic. You're going to go like, oh, that sounds pretty bloody good. I'm going to, get, I'm going to run up that hill. Uh -huh. So if we think about the same thing applied to, to meditation, what if we force ourselves to meditate, we're first of all stepping into that space in a negative vibration where we're forcing ourselves to, to do something. And so it's better to actually empower ourselves to just be more calm and if we want to meditate and sit down and do the cross-legged thing, you know, so I tried to do the, and see the language, I tried to do the full year, 20 minutes every morning. I was absolutely forcing it. And I reckon I had one day out of, I lasted half a year. I had one day, one or two days where I actually enjoyed it. The rest of the time I just sat there going, this is shit, this oh, is shit, this, is this. Sucks. this sucks, this sucks. Meditation sucks, this is shit. And I just didn't enjoy it. So now... With and breath works help me get to a point where I can be more present. And because I think what meditation does is it gets you when you actually drop into a meditation, if you've ever experienced it, there's like everything and nothing at the same time. It's it's literally like everything and nothing at the same time. It's just this state of bliss. And 
learning to get into that state more often, you can actually just start to, to vibrate and navigate life in that same state. And so without thinking, I'm going to meditate, now I, I actually live meditative. So one of my, my affirmations and one of my goals is to just live, is to just enjoy life and, and the present moment. And it takes work. I'm not going to say it's that easy to do. Actually, no, I'm going to say it is that easy to do because your language matters. It's easy to do when you set the intention that it's easy to do and you just start enjoying life. So, for instance, one of the meditations that I like encouraging people to do and without forcing it is just observing the mind. So it's not your mind because we all share a collective mind. Mind has about 60,000 thoughts a day on average and they race through and when we've got a rushing mind, some there'll be more. Sometimes we've got a quiet mind, there'll be less. And so if you just pause for a moment, do you want to do a little? Do you want to do a sixty-second meditation? Yeah, yeah. We we'll just drop in. Everyone join in. So we're just going to sit there, and I'm just going to show you one of the techniques I use. So you just close your eyes. If you're driving, don't close your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Please but don't. Just listen to this concept. So what we're doing is, is all we do is we just close our eyes. So we're giving ourselves time and space just to be. Now you're going to picture your mind as like a tree, like this beautiful big tree, the best, the most magical tree you've ever seen got all these branches on it, can have whatever color flowers or color in it, can have no leaves, heaps of leaves, whatever, branches. And then every time a thought comes in, it's just like a bird. And a bird lands on a branch. And then you watch the branch, you watch the bird, but you don't try and put that bird in a cage. So you don't get attached to that thought. You're just watching it just like a bird. And sometimes it's like a woodpecker. It like pecks away. Ding, 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 ding. It really pisses you off. That's okay. It's just a word doing its thing on the mind. Sometimes it's just a pretty bird. It has a, you know, it's a nice vibrational thought. And it's funny because as soon as you start observing these birds, eventually they just fly away. Some stay around longer. Some don't even land. Some just go straight through. And... When you step in a state of observation, you start to detach from what you think it is and you just start to look at it. And all we're doing is we're trying to imagine we're looking at our thoughts mm. and we're just watching them come and go. And so if you open your eyes now, that's, that's a really simple technique that I like to do that just helps me observe. And so I don't even really think about meditation anymore you know I'll, I'll just go out in the backyard sometimes or even when i'm stressed I'll, t I'll just take that moment to close my eyes and i just watch and so i and i always picture just this beautiful big tree and these birds that come in and, and if i have a thought that's just pestering me that day it'll come in and then i go what kind of bird does that look like and then I, my visual mind creates like maybe like an evil looking bird like like this big crow or something i'm like oh wow that's a dark thought and as soon as i put my intention to it being a bird it flies off like oh it's gone oh because we're very visual beings mm. i think that's a lot of us how we learn and everything uh i've been asked before you try to think about what way do you open your fridge door is it left to right oh, yeah. or right to left you know you, you start left to, to right yeah with the right hand yeah so if you can picture that sort of stuff like and visualize some things like you just said visualize that feeling or that emotion just flying away yeah, so I think a lot of people get, I know a lot of people get caught up on the whole meditation, sit there, be still, you know, rah, rah. There's, there's so many different ways, affirmations to do meditations. But the more you can just become present and whatever modality that helps you be present, if surfing makes you feel present, if running makes you feel present, if, you know, whatever it is that helps you slow down, just do it more because that's the journey. You don't have to be a monk who sits still. You don't have to go and do a 10-day Vipassana to be worthy of life. You don't have to be a crazy spiritual person who sits down in alms to be any worth in life. You're already worthy, no matter where you are, because you're a human being and you're entitled to every, every emotion that comes with life. And so when you can allow yourself just to start observing your own experience... And just don't attack, like, like I said with the bird, you don't want to try and put it in a cage, otherwise that bird's going to resent you. You're trying to force it. Just watch it. 
Just let it do its thing. Sometimes it comes through. And when you, when you notice these birds, they come more often. Oh, where, why is that bird hanging around more? Ask the question. Oh, what is that related to? And you can start asking questions and unpack your own thoughts. And I think that's a really important way to start m- putting yourself into a bigger picture of looking at your mind instead of being so deep in it and get, oh, I always think this. No, that's my thought. No, just, just watch it. And just be. It's so, I think it's really important. And it's, mm. it's something I've learned to, you know, I'm, I'll do it with my dog. I just sit there with Sol. We just sit in the backyard and that's meditation to me. You know, I've just had a child sitting there looking at Indy and the way he looks and, you know, his hands move and stuff. That's, to me, that's meditation, man. I'm so present. Nothing else matters. And it might be walking out into nature and looking at, the leaves or it might be looking at kids playing in a park or you know thinking about great times you know it doesn't really doesn't matter (laughs) Mm, i'm glad you brought that up because that's what i was going to take us into next was i feel like we've forgotten that we're actually meant to be in nature Mm. as soon as i came up to your house here bro like jordan and nick live up in this beautiful place in montville and it just you just feel different you know, even just when I was driving up here, just being away from like the all the other cars, all the other houses, all the other lights, all this other shit, you just feel this what we just spoke about, this presence. Mm. Nothing else really matters. You're in like when I go to mum and dad's in the country, the air's different. It's just you get your bare feet on the grass and you, you ground. You know, grounding I think is something that I've really found has sent me to another level too. Mm. Even going to the beach in the morning and just watching the waves, just being there and just breathing. Get your toes deep in the sand. Yeah. Simple things. And I think the beauty of what we've just spoken about over this potty was the fact that a lot of this shit's free mm. or cheap or available. I, wouldn't, I don't like using cheap, actually. Yeah, available. It's available for most people. And if there's a way that you can find these things and even just a weekend where we spend to go out to like some camping. This, I get why so many people love camping now. Mm, it's presence. Yeah. Time slows down. Camping, man, the night, you go to bed at like 7 o'clock at night because you think it's midnight. <laughs> yeah, time's not a thing, right? No, it's, yeah. it's, it's so cool. And I think that's a big point for people. Even if you can just go out, like in your lunch break or whatever at work, or if you just get a moment, just go out, take your shoes off and put your feet on the grass. Simply, so th- another thing I used to do, and it's, it's all this stuff's coming back to me. <laughs> I used to just sit in the gr- and try and count as many blades of grass as I could in like two minutes. Right. So I'd just go, if I was going to have a five minute break, because when, uh, when I was in Melbourne, I was in the city and it really, it really had an effect on my energy. Mm. Like I had to do, I had to be really aware of and I'd sca- escape down the great, great Ocean Road on the weekend and get back in the surf and stuff and out in the cold and out in the nature. But when I was in the city, I really noticed that there's a different vibration in cities. There's a, there's a different frequency. Like it, people, people act differently. And so I used, to, I used to work in Exhibition Street and I could walk down the road and there was a park and I'd walk down there, I'd take my shoes off and I'd just put my feet on the grass and I'd count blades of grass and instantly everything faded away because I was just focused on what was natural, like what, was, what mattered, like, the, like looking at nature. Mm. And it's crazy what it does for your mind and it sounds so... It can sound so like hippie or like woo woo. Like we were like, what do you mean you count blades of grass? Like, okay, we'll just keep doing what you're doing there, man. If you're happy, don't change it. Yeah. But if you're stressed out, if you're bugged out, if you're feeling emotional, if you're feeling depressed, if you're feeling angry, frustrated, stressed, anxious, all this stuff, just get back to basics. Put yourself into nature. And how good do you feel after even just a walk in the bush or a swim in the ocean? It is, it's, it's what we were designed to do is be in nature. Yeah, that was part of our evolution. That's where we came from. Mm, yeah, baby. <laughs> Never been put in these concrete jungles. No. <sighs> Which are, they're incredible. They're, they they oh, bring yeah. amazing benefits, but there's, also, there's a trade-off with everything. Just finding that balance that works for you. Mm. You know, again, all these foundations of fulfillment episodes, it's like there's no right or wrong. These are just experiences and opinions that have been personal to my guests and myself. And you take what you want from it. You use what you like and what you need to. And like Potsy said multiple times, if you're fine, then cool. We are very happy for you because 
to be of service to others and just to help you find your happiness, which is that fulfillment, then that's awesome. Mm. But, um, dude, you nailed that. Is there anything that, anything else you can sort of think of that they might benefit from? We covered oh, quite man. a few points there. Yeah, there's, there's a bit in there. Yeah. I just think, I think at the end of the day, it's, it's really important for people to self-assess because if you're not willing to look at your own life through an objective lens, not, not, through, not always through an emotional lens because emotions, you can get quite caught up in emotions, but just look at the facts. Am I happy? Am I content? Am I satisfied? Am I inspired? Am I feeling passionate? Am I energetic? And just, just look at it, okay? Where am I not those things? Or on the flip side, what am I unsatisfied with? What am I not happy with? Because every single thing, we have the ability to change. Every single thing, whether it's a relationship, a job, money, food, beliefs, you know, a self-image, our, you know, so, so, everything, everything we have the ability to change. So if you take that time and space, and that's what I really feel empowered to do at the moment is create time and space for people. Freedom. Once you have the time and space in your life and you clear the nonsense and the stuff that doesn't actually matter to you, life frees up. And so it's going to take, it might take five minutes a day at the start. It might take one minute a day just at the start to, to give yourself one minute a day just to think about something. And once, that, once the biggest priority comes up, okay, so it might be energy. Okay, my energy is always low. Okay, I'm going to start researching and, and reaching out to ask about how I can improve my energy. Or maybe it's love, or maybe it's your pain, like maybe it's your mobility, whatever it is. Whatever is the, the single largest priority to you at the time, just get clear on it. And once you've got that clarity, you can start researching and improving your life. And, and it is really that, that step-by-step process. It's not all going to happen at once. Mm. And if you're feeling like you're deep in the pit, at, like I was at one point, you know, I, I had a near-death experience and woke up on the other side of, you know, massive six-year bender full of drugs and alcohol and sex and just ru- just absolutely sabotaging and destroying myself. And I just started piecing it together bit by bit, bit by bit, bit by bit. And, you know, what was that, 2017? Four years on, bro, it's a different life. It's a different world. You're still young as, man. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. So anyone can do it, guys. You have a lot of control. You might not think you do, but you can control a lot in your life, like we just said. So, brother, thank you. Boom, baby. That was amazing. Let's go. Hope you enjoyed that, guys, and good luck on finding your fulfillment because listening to this sort of stuff, I think you'll do it quite easily. Yeah. They don't need luck. Take action. Uh, Take Take action. action, Get it done. (laughs) Cheers, guys.